Hello, good morning. Good morning and a very warm welcome from me. My name is uh, Gavin Essler and I'll be the host on this stage throughout today and also tomorrow. It promises to be a quite extraordinary couple of days. Um, as someone from outside the NHS, I think I can say with a degree of objectivity that next year at your 70th birthday, the NHS will again be recognised as one of the most important and best loved public bodies anywhere in the world. And you'll also be recognised, despite some of the hiccups that you as insiders may see from time to time, one of the best run and most efficient public organisations anywhere. So, thank you. Now, the success of the NHS is largely due to constant innovation. And that is what we're going to be talking about over the next couple of days. The constant challenge to be forward thinking, to come up with new ideas. In a moment, uh, we begin on this stage, the first of many engaging and, I hope, thought-provoking discussions. But first, a few words of housekeeping. We kindly ask that all mobiles are switched on, but too silent during the event. Switched on because we'd very much like you to tweet. You'll see some of the details there. And also, you can use Glisser, and you'll find more information on the pack you were given when you arrived. Now, to business. And who better to set the scene for us than uh, Andy Burnham, the Mayor of Greater Manchester, who is with me, and Sir Malcolm Grant, Chair of NHS England. Please, will you welcome Malcolm. Well, thank you very much, Gavin, and a very warm welcome on behalf of the whole of NHS England to everybody at this year's Expo. I'm happy to announce this morning that the registrations for this year's event have now exceeded 5,900. That's the number of people who will be coming through this building over the next two days. And to me, it symbolizes so many things. First of all, the sheer importance of innovation in the NHS, which this expo is celebrating. And secondly, the sheer importance of the NHS itself, as Gavin has told us, this institution that commands just so much public respect not just in this country, but internationally. We are fundamentally British, and we fundamentally seek newspaper headline after newspaper headline that is critical and appropriately critical of whenever the NHS falls short. But do not ignore the extraordinary phenomenon that has lasted for 70 years, providing a system of free health care universally to an entire population and free at the point of clinical need. That mantra, I trust, will survive the next 70 years. And if it does survive, it will be the consequence of continuing and constant innovation. We are frequently criticized for being in favor of those wonderfully historic models of innovation and technology, the pager and the fax machine. Uh, we are still the world's largest consumers of both of these devices. But how quickly we need to adapt our own technology to that which everybody in this room is using every day of the week, moving towards more mobile models of engagement with this wonderful institution. The Expo has a life of its own. We have on display here different aspects of what the NHS is doing in different locations, our Healthy New Towns program, our hotbeds, our test beds program. We've got the pop-up university, which must be the cheapest university in the country. Uh, there's no vice chancellor and um, there is no fee. Indeed, there's no fee for the entire expo. This is something which is being hosted by NHS England that paid for generously by those who sponsor us. And I would just like this morning to express our thanks to all of the sponsors, to all of the participants, to all of the exhibitors, and above all, to all of those from our own teams and elsewhere who have made this possible, who have come together and gathered together such a fine expo. But let me reflect on why it is that Manchester should be the place that we come to to think every year about innovation. And the answer is obvious for so many reasons. This is the city which in the 19th century led innovation in the development of technology, not just across Britain, but across the world. I remember as a schoolboy in New Zealand learning about the Corn Laws and their repeal and the opening up in laissez-faire, which was the first French I'd ever learnt, uh, all led out of Manchester, this model of change. This is the city 
which in the face of that most appalling terrorist act on the 22nd of May has shown its resilience, not a cold-hearted resilience, a highly emotional resilience as was demonstrated by the commemorative concert just on Saturday evening. But this is the city that faces the future with determination and confidence. So we at NHS England have also entered into an historic arrangement with Greater Manchester. First of all, an historic arrangement that builds not on what we alone were doing, but on a partnership with local government, bringing together 10 councils into a combined authority, each still representing Bury or Salford or Manchester City, but together conveying a sense of common purpose across the whole of Manchester. So there is the Greater Manchester Combined Authority. Our contribution to that, working with the local authorities and involving 37 NHS and local government organisations has been to set up the Health and Social Care Partnership and to devolve the funding for health care in Manchester to that partnership. This is an historic first. It's an historic first to test the capacity of local organisations, highly fragmented, to come together with a common purpose and to cross the boundaries, which are not just territorial boundaries between the boroughs, but institutional boundaries, and particularly that difficult borderline between healthcare and social care. There is, within Manchester, I would suggest, an extraordinary potential. That then brings me to the newly elected mayoralty of Manchester. The decision by central government in conjunction with the local authorities to opt for a directly elected mayor, a new model of local government. And it's been an extraordinary opportunity for Manchester to step forward as a new model authority, the combined authority. The election, of course, uh, ended with the election of, uh, of, of Andy Burnham. And it's, I think, an apt election for the purposes of these two days of events. First, because Andy was, in his past life, first of all, a minister in the Department of Health, then subsequently the Secretary of State for Culture, and then subsequently the Secretary of State for Health, until in 2010 the electorate chose a different career for him. And the upshot of that has been, I think, to Manchester's enormous advantage. So it gives me enormous pleasure to welcome to the podium the Mayor of Greater Manchester. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Andy Burnham. Thank you very much, Mark. Very, very kind. Well, thank you uh, very much indeed, uh, Malcolm. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's my uh, <clears throat> wonderful duty this Monday morning to welcome friends old and new to Manchester, the capital of football, capital of music, capital of health and social care integration, also capital of rain. And I'm sorry to you all that we can't do much about that, although as mayor I'm going to get a plan together to sort it out and next year will be uh, better when you, when you come. It's great to be gathering this year because we're on the brink of a momentous year uh, next, next year. It marks 70 years since an Iron Bevan came to Greater Manchester, to Trafford General Hospital, uh, to inaugurate the new National Health Service. But 2018 will be a significant year in Manchester for other reasons too. It will mark 100 years of women's suffrage. That campaign, as we know, led out of this city, out of Moss Side, uh, by the Pankhursts. It will also mark 150 years of the foundation of the trade union movement, just a few streets uh, away from where we meet uh, today. And what that rich history tells you is that Manchester has always been, as Malcolm was saying, the home of radical forward thinking, of social disruption and innovation. But it is also a place where there's been a rich tradition of industrial innovation, the place where the, the atom was split, where one of the first computers was invented, and at the hotel just over there where Mr. Rolls 
met Mr. Royce. So it's the combination of those two things, isn't it? Social disruption and innovation alongside that culture of enterprise and innovation in industry that makes Manchester the ideal uh, location for this uh, prestigious event. And we're grateful to NHS England for bringing it uh, here uh, once again. This uh, event, in my view, though, has a real job of work to do. We have to work out how we're going to make the transition in our National Health Service as it approaches its 70th year from a 20th century treatment service, which for all that we love about it, really it still is, to a 21st century health promotion and life support service, a whole person uh, service. And that's what we've got to debate. And I believe here in Manchester, in Greater Manchester, we have the ability to be the pioneers of that change uh, and to make that paradigm shift from a medical model to a social model of support. And I want to talk to you a little more uh, about that um, today. But we are, of course, as Malcolm said also, a city in recovery. I will never forget driving in to Manchester city centre on the morning of Tuesday 23rd of May at about 5 a.m., having not slept all night. I felt sick to the pit of my stomach because I honestly didn't know what lay ahead, what I was coming into, how we were going to uh, be able to respond. But as the day kind of wore on, things started to change. We received messages of support from all over the country. And I want to thank you all for those, because it meant a tremendous amount in that, in that moment. And it gave a feeling that there was affection for Manchester across the country. And as the day wore on and people came up to me and spoke to me and we began to come to terms, I guess, with what happened, I felt the strength of the people here, the strength of our communities, the strength of the partnerships that have been built, as Malcolm was saying, between our councils and our other public bodies, true strength in those uh, arrangements. And that helped me, it helped us all respond. But also I felt the strength in our National Health Service in Greater Manchester. And it's at moments like that when the true value of the NHS is really seen for all uh, that it's uh, worth. A service which today is still so much more than the sum of its parts. I spent those first few days after the attack visiting all of the accident and emergency departments uh, in Greater Manchester, speaking to A&E staff and also uh, paramedics. And there were stories of incredible service that people gave. The one that sticks in my mind now, the intensive care consultant from Stepping Hill Hospital, who was at the arena picking up his daughter and spent a couple of hours in the immediate aftermath tending and treating people at the scene and then got in his car and drove to Stepping Hill and operated throughout the night as victims of the attack started uh, to arrive. It was incredible to see and hear those stories and rightly NHS staff have been praised and it's a measure of the affection they're held in. If you went to those A&Es, people were coming in with, with food uh, to give uh, to the staff. It was very touching and very uh, humbling. I won't name it, but I went to one A&E where you had to weave between the towers of pizza boxes. Uh, so where we may call ourselves the capital of many things, we are yet, I think, to be able to call ourselves the capital of healthy eating. But nevertheless, it was a, a great thought that the public wanted to support our NHS staff uh, in that moment. But while the staff have rightly been praised, as I said, I want to praise another group today who perhaps don't always get the recognition that they deserve. And that is our managers and our system leaders here in Greater Manchester. Just a few weeks before the attack, our chief executives from across the system and system leaders had run a scenario planning exercise 
for a major attack on one of Greater Manchester's large facilities just a few weeks before. And because of that foresight, the NHS here was able to put into effect a plan on the night that, in my view, saved lives. A system was put in place where the right patients were sent to the right hospitals and consequently, I think, received the care when they needed it. It was an incredible uh, piece of, of planning, but then also operation. And the NHS leaders here, who are led superbly by John Rouse, but across the system, deserve great credit uh, for what they, for what they uh, did. And in my view, uh, helped us uh, prevent uh, death and other uh, serious injury and suffering because of what they, what they had, had done. While I'm praising those system leaders, I want to just say one thing this morning that uh, will happen this week. I gather it will be the, the last uh, address uh, to this event by Professor Sir Bruce Keogh, uh, who is standing down as NHS England's medical uh, director. Bruce did support me as Secretary of State, and I've never met such a warm, compassionate, uh, true advocate for the values of the National Health Service, and he has given great service uh, to it uh, throughout his career. And it's my privilege to be able to play one of the first affectionate tributes that I'm sure you will hear uh, to Sir Bruce as, as this week uh, wears on. So we are blessed with great people leading the NHS both here in Greater Manchester and uh, nationally. And I want to carry forward as Mayor of Greater Manchester that principle that we saw very much in operation when the attack happened of the NHS as one system where we don't have that fragmentation that Malcolm spoke of, where there isn't institutional loyalty but a loyalty to the people of Greater Manchester. And for me, we start there as we begin here to build a 21st century NHS. We need to make it a preventative, person-centred service uh, that helps people live the life that they want to live. Here, we are going to pioneer a positive vision of ageing and get away from some of the negativity that surrounds this debate. As Mayor, I've said, I want to banish use of the phrase bed blocker. For me, that reveals the wrong mindset that we see patients as the problem, as the burden, and disrespectfully uh, label older people uh, in that way. We have a frailty index. Sometimes we are looking at people thinking about what they can't do rather than what they can do, the contribution that they can continue to make to Greater Manchester throughout a longer life. And we have to start there and think about that as we begin to build an NHS for the future that is about promoting good health, because love it as we do, it has never been that in its 70-year history. It has been a medical treatment service. And if it is to survive, as Malcolm says, it must make that paradigm uh, shift. So we need to see commissioning reform. If we are to bring health and social care together, I would like to see the emergence of a single commissioning voice in each of our 10 boroughs, so that we do have a one system population-based uh, approach. We need to see financial reform, and we want to work with NHS England on this. We need to move away from the episodic tariff, which actually keeps that treatment service mindset by paying for each episode of care, and move towards a system that supports prevention, that is about keeping people where they want to be in the home, and that is about going more towards a year of care, whole person approach that combines funding for people's physical, mental, and crucially, their social needs. And that change, critical change, will begin to allow the NHS to develop in a different way. We need to think about prescribing reform so that when people go to the GP, the first thought isn't to give somebody medication. The first interaction often should be to give people exercise or dietary advice, counselling or therapy, whatever it might be. So we embrace this notion of social prescribing, which is already working here. And I know elsewhere too, down the M62, my old friend Dave Sweeney, who leads Holton uh, Clinical Commissioning Group, who's here, here today, doing great work there. And I know across the country too, there is real innovation taking place in terms of how we 
support people differently when they go and ask for the support of the NHS. And it is about that behavior change. And primary care could have a major role in delivering uh, that. But critically, it's about workforce reform too. And actually, if there's one challenge staring us in the face right now, it has to be that. With all of the implications of Brexit just around the corner for the NHS and what that might mean uh, for uh, the sustainability of our workforce. It goes deeper, though, than just Brexit. If I'm speaking about the young people of Greater Manchester, who I've said will be my priority as mayor, and I've been going around listening to them about how hard it is to get on in life, you know, there's a big thing that's changed in this area in the last 10 or 15 years, and that is many young people here don't think they can aspire to work in the NHS anymore because of the way training and the funding of, of training has changed. It seems out of reach to many of them. And that is something that should trouble us all. Nursing should be for everyone, but it doesn't feel that way. The change to university finance and tuition fees is on the one hand, and then the loss of the bursary on the other, I think could present real problems. And here, I want to see how we can offer young people a new deal to work in Greater Manchester's NHS. So if they commit to our NHS here, to work in it after getting their qualification, let's say for five years, that we repay that commitment by guaranteeing them a job or helping pay off their tuition fees or helping them with housing. We need to think radically and differently about how we develop young people into the NHS workforce of the future. And I hope to work with Malcolm and his colleagues on that, as well as recognizing the pressure on the existing workforce uh, today. As I was saying when we responded to the attack, the NHS runs on goodwill. Without it, there is no national health service. If you lose that goodwill, then it starts to become just the sum of its parts and not more than the sum of its parts. And that's why I do say to the government, if they are looking at relaxing the pay cap for some professionals, it is critical that they recognize the real pressure now on our nursing, midwifery, and other health professionals, that workforce. We need to ensure that they can commit to their jobs without worrying about whether or not they've got enough money to feed the kids from one week to the next. So we need to see change in terms of the workforce because in the end, that is the National Health Service. But I will um, finish, if I may, just by touching on the bigger opportunity that we have here uh, in Greater Manchester. Because if we are to rise to these 21st century challenges, it's not enough for the NHS just to integrate itself and to integrate itself with social care. It's time to make sure the NHS isn't in its own silo, separate from other public services. The unique opportunity before Greater Manchester is to be able to break down those silos because we have a devolution deal that brings all of those public services together. Nowhere else has that ability that we have and we intend to use it uh, to the full. Last week in Greater Manchester, 38,000 four-year-olds started reception class. About 12,000 of them didn't have the basic language and social skills to mean that they were ready to learn at primary school. And we know, all of us, that those young people possibly will never catch up, that they will continue to be the ones who fall behind and suffer poorer health in later life. That was the conclusion of the Marmot report that was delivered to me in February 2010. It said, if you're going to do anything, invest in those first few years of life. Don't let people fall behind. Give children the support when they need it. So that's what we're going to do here in Greater Manchester, using the freedom and the flexibility we have. We're going to implement the Marmot Report. Seven years late, too late possibly, but we're going to do it. And I, as Mayor, have said, let's have a focus on school readiness. All public bodies in Greater Manchester, NHS, schools, councils, police, everybody, all of us, let's commit to reducing that 12,000 figure year on year because we know that if we do it, we won't just improve the life chances of young people here, we will improve their health as well because people who feel they have a purpose are people who tend to have better health. We know the evidence is there and that's why we're going uh, to make school readiness a real focus and make it a preeminent and shared goal 
of all of our public services. And I hope that brings over to you how devolution may begin to change things, where we don't just have services going to their own priorities, but we set a new challenge, which is about society as a whole. And we ask everybody to collaborate about making that change and making a dramatic improvement to the health of our population. So that is the mission that we are on uh, here. And we want you all here to feel a part of it too. Exciting things are going to be happening here in the next few years. Changes on a scale that haven't been uh, seen before. We are going to be the test bed for new ideas, for new thinking in the delivery of public services. And what I put out to you today is an open invitation to work with us, to be part of it, come and help us. Because if we can make a reality of the opportunity that we've got, then that will help other areas too. And it will help our National Health Service make that transition from a treatment service to a 21st century health uh, promotion uh, service. We are the home of radical forward thinking. If anywhere can do it, I believe we can do it. But we will only do it uh, with your help. And I hope you will give us that support as we make this change. Welcome. Have a great time in Manchester. Stay dry and enjoy your week. Thank you very much. So, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of NHS England, all our thanks to the Mayor of Manchester. We will work with the Mayor of Greater Manchester in constructive partnership and constructive challenge. But now, on behalf of NHS England, it gives me great pleasure to declare Expo open. Thank you all for coming today.